<coughs> Hello friends, so good morning, it's Saturday the 7th of November and I'm going to redo the video I did yesterday which got corrupted or it got messed up friends, I did it in four parts and as I was um, composing and joining all four parts the whole thing got corrupted so I had to delete the entire message anyway the Lord's will be done I want to talk today about the one <laughs> and his mishaps his provocative ways in the region and I can just almost hear myself say I told you so years and years ago I was warning about this situation that we're seeing playing out right now friends that it would come to pass that Turkey would begin to rise again but it will begin to uh, be more Islamist and it would have to have a leader who would be very religious very provocative and cause a lot of trouble in the region nations who are in close proximity to Turkey will understand what I'm talking about and I just I told you so praise God the Word of God never never misleads us friends it always leads us to truth as does the Holy Spirit who is the spirit of truth now some of you are aware of what's been going on lately but there's more to this I'm going to share with you today I want to talk to you about the what's been going on in Austria and Turkey the relationship between them recently before the terrorist incident but before I begin let me play this clip and it's from TRT. I want you to hear their perspective and how they present this new story. Just like they say don't buy Turkish brands in France, I call on my people to never buy French products. The words of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan in response to his French counterpart Emmanuel Macron's controversial comments on the state of Islam in an atmosphere heightened following the murder of a school teacher in France by a terrorist two weeks ago. Erdogan's remarks came at an opening ceremony of a week honoring the birth of the Prophet. He's accused Macron of encouraging Islamophobic attacks in France and is calling on world leaders to stand up for oppressed Muslims. Macron's comments and his proposal to pass a bill which French Muslims say will diminish their religious freedoms has prompted anger in the Muslim world. Many nations, including Kuwait, Qatar, Lebanon and Tunisia, have also initiated a boycott on French goods. Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan was also harsh in his comments, accusing Macron of creating further polarization and marginalization that inevitably leads to radicalization. But the French president has full support from his European allies. EU Council President Charles Michel and German Chancellor Angela Merkel expressed their support for Macron. Morocco and Jordan issued statements condemning Macron, while there were protests in Libya, Syria, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Iraq and the state of Palestine. The French Foreign Ministry was quick to urge Arab rulers to take action to immediately stop the boycott. The Muslim Human Rights Group, the collective against Islamophobia in France, has announced it no longer feels safe in France and will go international. So this whole idea of how it is impossible to be a Muslim nowadays in the West or in Europe, um, I wouldn't completely um, subscribe to that, but I would, I would say that definitely... I told you, this is what we're going to hear more often now, friends, this terminology, Islamophobia and the blasphemy laws. Expect it and expect this debate to be ongoing, friends, and with that will come the provocation, the terrorist incidents that you're seeing already taking place. And notice how it's coming from predominantly the Asian subcontinent, friends. So you've got your Pakistani, Indian, Bangladeshi, Muslim community who are going to be very, very vocal and very um, outward expressive of their distrust of our government leaders, of the uh, perceived Islamophobia. And we have those communities in our nations in high numbers, friends. So the times that we're entering now is going to be extremely, extremely crucial for the church, the people of God, to be very vigilant, friends, very wise as serpents and gentle as doves. 
These are the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ and we must always, please refer back to my last video, the one just before this, and please make sure to listen to that video twice, at least twice, so it sinks in. What is our response? What are we to do as children of God? In the face of this extreme provocation that's coming, friends, of Islamic terrorism, this Islamophobia laws, because they're going to somehow pass it. They want it internationally recognized, especially Erdogan and Imran Khan of Pakistan. They want this to be law as we have anti-Semitism laws. They're equating them to be one and the same thing. Let's continue to listen. Definitely, it is um, difficult to find the right kind of spaces, the right kind of platforms to voice our concerns because what is going on oftentimes is that um, there is a sort of epistemological violence, epistemological racism um, um, towards Muslims. As the war of wars continue between the French leadership and the Muslim world, it remains unclear how the concerns of France's six million will be addressed. Mehmet Solman's TRT World. And of course, with these six millions will come the call for Sharia law, because when they increase in number, naturally they want Sharia law to govern them. Now, remember friends, not all Muslims think this way. You have to understand, when I'm talking about Islam and Muslims, I'm not talking about every single Muslim. I'm not talking about your nice neighbour next door, your community leader where you live. I'm not talking about them. Because those moderates in those regions, friends, they're looking at what's taking place right now and they understand the threat Islam, Islam, political Islam poses even to them. Many of these Muslims have fled those nations from the Middle East, North Africa, Asia, where extreme behavior, extreme community, extreme Islamic rhetoric, ideology, the teaching that happens in those nations, they understand that it's not for them. They flee those nations and they come to the West for freedom, for liberty, because they just want to get on with their lives. They want to earn a good income, they want to support their families and have a peaceful, as at best, a life. So please bear that in mind when you listen to my messages, I'm not bashing Muslims here. I'm talking about this ideology, friends, I believe is the Antichrist Beast Kingdom and it's forming right now. Do you understand, friends, from my past videos, I've spoken numerous times about the Antichrist Beast Kingdom rising up out of this region. Primarily, the hot spot is Turkey, Iraq, Syria. The Euphrates River, when it dries up, is going to bring in an army an army of radicals that are going to spew out wicked demonic power from that region friends so it's not like where the world is going to appease islam and we're just going to all get along and this one world religion we just seal the deal no that's what the southern <clears throat> the arabs want and together with israel egypt UAE, the Abraham Accords. This is the kind of thing they're seeking to do. Why? Because they want to get along in order to prosper. It's all about the money for them. Resources, money, fame, security, so-called security. But Pakistan Prime Minister gets involved in this rhetoric. Who would have thought, you guys, the cricketer, world champion cricketer, Pakistani cricket team, years and years ago? Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan is involved in a demagoguery in the wake of French President Emmanuel Macron's statements on freedom of expression. Remember I just talked about this, friends. We're going to hear a lot about this debate, ongoing debate. The secularists, the humanists, the right-wing extremists, the nationalists are going to join in this debate and say to Islam, no, thank you. We're not going to put up with it. And it's going to end up being pretty nasty, friends. I'm going to expect to see a lot more um, descent into chaos. In Europe and the dangers of radical Islamism following terrorist attacks in France see every time there's a terrorist attack they're gonna come out with this kind of rhetoric instead of condemning outright and looking inwardly and thinking perhaps there's something wrong with the book the text itself that needs revision they're gonna say no it's because you guys hate Islam therefore you're breeding this hostile environment for lone rangers to go and carry out their attacks. Anyway, this isn't the main chunk of the news I want to share with you today. I'm just showing you that you've got these two leaders who are very vocal 
toward the West about Islamophobia and the blasphemy laws. This is why their nations treat the minorities like crap. How is the religion of peace bringing enlightenment in the region? I'm going to discuss briefly, touch on the Muslim Brotherhood as well, friends. Hold on a moment. But this is very interesting. The Austrian government under fire for lack of neutrality in Turkey-Greece row because they want to appease Turkey. Half, some of the population in Austria wanted to appease them. Austria's main opposition has criticised the government's foreign policy for taking sides in the Eastern Mediterranean crisis between Turkey and Greece. They want to be the mediator, and in order to be a mediator, you've got to be neutral, right? The Social Democratic Party of Austria lawmaker Jorg slammed the Austrian People's Party for taking sides in the row between Agar and Athens over the distribution of resources. That's what the Antichrist is going to be making war over. <laughs> How many times have I said this? The distribution of resources. Because whoever owns those seas, friends, the resources, the natural resources, is going to be rich. It's going to be claimed to be the leader. Strategic. <clears throat> Instead of adopting neutral meditative position, mediative. The criticism came after Austrian Foreign Minister Alexander explained the government's stance on international developments, including the Mediterranean and the Nagorno-Karabakh crisis. Relations between Ankara and Vienna deteriorated after Vienna restricted Turkish politicians from attending campaign rallies ahead of a key referendum in 2017. This terrorist attack, I... I have strong suspicions, friends, the one that took place in Vienna is linked to Turkey. And I know other ones come out and he's condemned it. And he's also praised these two guys who were of Turkic origin in Austria who were helping the victims. I know he said he praises them and this is the true face of Turkey. Um, but I believe he's connected to it. Ankara is critical of Vienna's illiberal interrogation policies in difference to a PKK terrorist, populist rhetoric and failure to take a strong position against growing racism and anti-Muslim hatred. Racism and anti-Muslim hatred, how are they one and the same? Islam isn't a race. Turkey and Greece, neighboring NATO members, have been at odds for decades over maritime boundaries for commercial exploitation in an area between Turkey's southern coast several greek islands and the divided island of cyprus i really want to go back and do a really detailed bible study on the book of daniel which talks a lot about this and the book of revelation i must do that friends because many of us are not aware of those scriptures and it's really really worth the investment in rehashing and going over the same messages i've done in times past because i think they're important now the tensions peaked again when Turkey, the country, the longest East Mediterranean coastline, uh -huh, sent drill ships to explore for energy on its continental shelf. Is it any wonder, friends, why the word of God says, And I saw the beast rising up out of the sea in Revelation? In Daniel, it talks about the great sea which was being stirred, and the four beasts came out from that sea. Is this region, you guys? saying that both Turkey and the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus have rights to natural resources in the region. Again, another one of the main reasons why he invades Jerusalem is because of natural resources. Now, check this out. This, this is what was news back in October regarding Austria. Listen to this. Envoy, so-called spy, puts Turks in Austria at risk. Friends, do you remember what happened at the gates of Vienna centuries ago? The Ottoman Empire. And if Turkey is that seventh beast, let me see if I can get it. Hold on a moment. After Rome... This is reference to Revelation chapter 17. The seven mountains. The eighth one is the future one. These are all beasts, friends. 
the Egyptian, Assyrian, Babylonian, Medo-Persian, the Grecian, Rome, yes, Rome included, were part of the seven mountains, seven heads, seven kingdoms. The one is, at the time of John's revelation, was Rome. And what happened after that, friends? The Islamic kingdom. The other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. The beast that is not. It was abolished in 1924. The caliphate was abolished. And this is why the Muslim Brotherhood were formed, to revive it. They have a hundred... 100 year plan to revive it friends it's no coincidence that turkey also wants to revive its former glory days as in the ottoman empire days by the year 2023 the lausanne treaty which i've spoken about numerous times is going to come to an end it's inevitable friends we're going to see this just grow bigger and bigger until the antichrist who's thrown out from heaven cast down the dragon the serpent of old and he goes immediately after the woman and her offspring to persecute them that is called the great tribulation when satan is given the authority to do that is granted to him to make war against the saints three and a half years islamic caliphate rising being the eighth and the beast that was and is not he even is the eighth and is off is off the seventh it is connected to the Ottoman Empire, but it's going to be bigger. It's going to have more nations in his region. Let me go back a moment. We're looking at this guy from uh, Book of Daniel, Chapter 2, The Image. Now, I, don't hear, I haven't heard anybody else make this connection, but this image, this statue of a man is the Antichrist, in my understanding. The Word of God is telling us these divided beasts Babylonian Medo-Persian the, the, the Grecian and then the final beast of the iron is forming the image of the beast friends the image the statue of the beast Antichrist the ultimate arch enemy of Israel and of God on earth this guy is going to come and like I said we're watching the developments now let me go back look at these Turkish envoy to Austria says the allegations surrounding purported Turkish spy are baseless. They're defending themselves and saying it's a load of nonsense. The Turkish community in Austria is under pressure amid the so-called confessions of a Turkish spy, which Turkey says are baseless. Friends, Austria was already on high alert before this terrorist incident took place against Turkey. Speaking to Andalu Agency, Turkish ambassador to Austria, Ozan, I might skip some of these names if I find them just a tongue twister, I'll just skip some, okay, friends, said the allegations are baseless against the Turkish intelligence agency. Quote, I have clearly explained to journalists from different countries that this person does not have any relationship with Turkish intelligence and my country. He added that Ankara is watching the response of Austrian government ministers to the allegations with sadness. There are multiple channels of communication between Austria and Turkey, he said. They could get in touch with us, but so far Austrian authorities do not give us any information on this issue. The Turkish ambassador also expressed his concerns on the possible effects of the misinformation on the Turkish community in the country because they're worried that there's going to be a backlash, right friends? You see? Here comes in the rhetoric, the Islamophobia. According to reports in the Austrian press last month, listen to this. A man named Fiaz Ozturk went into a police station in Vienna claiming that he had been recruited by the Turkish intelligence agency. He allegedly recounted that he had been ordered to assassinate several Kurdish origin politicians in Austria and other ones been condemning Saudi Arabia for their alleged assassination of Jamal Khashoggi, the Muslim Brotherhood guy. <laughs> He's guilty of doing the same thing. Now of course they've denied these allegations and this guy who's made this claim is um, being protected right now. 
Turkey last month strongly denied the accusation, saying anti-Turkey circles were behind them. Despite this, the Interior Minister Carl announced last month that the judiciary would file charges on suspicion of espionage, adding, influence by foreign power in Austria would not be accepted. Austria is home to a Turkish immigrant community of more than 200,000 constantly subjected to racism and Islamophobia. Here you go. Get used to that rhetoric. It's going to become commonplace. Another news article touched on the same thing. Ahaval reported it. Austria's interior minister said he would not comment on the details of the investigation into the claims made by FIARS, but told NYT that we are taking this very seriously. They were already on high alert. So this terrorist incident, I believe, is connected directly to, with Turkey, friends. Let me move on. Got so much more to share with you. This is why my video was an hour long yesterday. After nearly a full year since Turkey and the Muslim Brother Government of National Accords, based in the Libyan capital Tripoli, made a maritime deal to steal Greece sovereignty in the East Mediterranean, friends, the European Union is already divided over Turkey. Now, some of them support what he's doing. Some of them are really up in op opposition to what he's doing. It's causing a fracture in the European Union, you guys. I told you this was going to happen. I mentioned this before, that I expect to see new alliances forming, friends. Why? In order to respond to the threat that's coming out of Ottoman Turkey. European ambassadors to Libya finally, finally rejected the Memorandum of Understanding. Check this out. Look at the nations that were involved. The European diplomats held a meeting with senior Libyan officials of the Muslim Brotherhood government on Saturday and emphasised a peaceful conclusion to the Libyan civil war while reaffirming its deal with Turkey to carve up Greek sovereignty is illegal. The ambassadors of Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Finland, Italy, Spain, Sweden and the charges affairs of Hungary, the Netherlands and Poland together with the ambassador of Norway held joint meetings in Tripoli with Turkish-backed Muslim Brotherhood Fayez, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Mohammed and Chairman of the National Oil Corporation, Mustafa, according to a statement issued by the EU delegation to Libya. They went by delegation there to address this. The statement said, the deal orchestrated by Sarat and Erdogan does not comply with the law of the sea and cannot produce any legal consequences for third states. This is going to cause a war, you guys, in that region. Cold war. Things are shaking up. The Lord God is going to shake up the nations, you guys. Now is the time, friends, to understand Bible prophecy. Now is the time to get in the, that good book and read and understand. Ask the Lord for understanding regarding the end times. What are we looking for? What's going to happen, friends? This is amazing. The Word of God is so perfect, so accurate. In our meetings today in Tripoli, we reaffirmed that the EU is united behind the Berlin process as the only option to put an end to the Libyan crisis and the suffering of Libya's civilian population and to avoid further destabilization in Libya and in the region, the statement said, adding, there can only be a political solution to the current crisis which would take the country backwards parliamentary and presidential elections. Look at this. Five countries blocked EU sanctions against Turkey. You see? You've got one side opposing what they're doing, and you've got so many within that little club kind of opposing sanctions. The EU leaders' summit on Friday did not bode well for Greece, especially as five countries are blocking sanctions against Turkey. More precisely, it had a worse ending than the previous summit on October the 2nd. The Greek Prime Minister did what he could to strengthen its diplomatic line in defence against intentions of the Turkish President Erdogan. So what will happen is the southern bloc, the Arabians with um, Israel, are going to have to fill in that void.
to support them, Greece. However, let me just make sure that's not... Oh. However, the Greek Prime Minister's ambitions clashed with the different interests of specific member states of the EU. Erdogan is causing a lot of problems because that is the region from where the Antichrist is going to rise from. Now, I'm not saying Erdogan is the Antichrist. Now, there is a, a very good Bible teacher out there, Chris. If you're there, Chris, please leave a comment and give us your feedback. He's published a book regarding Erdogan and how he believes he is the Antichrist. Chris, if you're there, please um, drop a comment with your links to your books and your website so we can all openly discuss and consider, okay, friends? The Greek side submitted a proposal in the imposition of an embargo on arms sale to Turkey, which was ultimately not included in the text in the previous conclusions. The Prime Minister in his press conference did not try to cover and back the fourth of European leaders, the opposite. The atmosphere prevailing in Brussels for Turkey was summed up by a community diplomatic source with the phrase, difficult days are coming. A clash. I'm predicting it's going to end up being a war. Athens is fully aware of the situation and the obstacles they will need to overcome. We're going to need a strong president in America to deal with what's coming in the days ahead. Not an appeaser, not an Islamist Biden. <clears throat> anyway, I won't go into that. I don't want to go into what my personal opinion is about that. They understand that the sanctions at this stage will mean the destruction of all hope for dialogue with Turkey and that is why Mitsotakis wants the threat to be on the table because, but does not demand the immediate imposition. He's, he's, in, he's in having a lot of trouble with Turkey. He needs a strong front, you guys. And the heading is without a single national front. Moving on. Oh God, because there's too much to talk about. Siege of Vienna. All right, let me go back here. So a little quick backstory. Siege of Vienna in Austria. Ottoman Empire and Austria at Vienna clashed. The Islamic Empire wanted to conquer and it spread as far as Spain. I wanted to get into Austria, friends, but they were unsuccessful. And I believe Erdogan has a strong memory and he considers himself Suleiman the Magnificent. At least praised him so many times. The siege of Vienna in 1529 was the first attempt by the Ottoman Empire, Islamic Ottoman Empire, to capture the city of Vienna, Austria. Please friends, refer to Bill Warner's channel called Political Islam and watch the video titled why we are afraid and that title means why are the west why is europe afraid to address and confront the threat that's coming from islam because and he's saying it's linked to this event in history what took place here it was so bad you guys it was so bad a lot of blood was shed please watch that video i'll link it in the description Suleiman the Magnificent, the Caliph at that time, Sultan of the Ottomans, attacked the city of Vienna with over 100,000 men, while the defenders led by Nicolas Grassel numbered no more than 21,000. Nevertheless, Vienna was able to survive the siege, which ultimately lasted just over two weeks from September 27th to the 15th of October in 1529. I'm going to put this link in the description so you can read into that, friends. Now, if, which is why I was referring you to the seven mountains, seven heads, seven kingdoms, was to show you that if Turkey is reviving the Ottoman Empire, and that is the seventh reviving, then we expect history to repeat itself, right? Makes sense, doesn't it? But the tactics, the strategy is going to be different. Now he's going to implement rhetoric, um, try to make claims over natural resources. And thirdly, which is the most dangerous to the West and to the EU, is the immigration laws that we have. 
ISIS, members of ISIS, can easily infiltrate Europe and the West. We've got North Africa infiltration into France, the Southern, and you've got from Europe into the UK. Friends, the leaders of our nations, they haven't got a clue. They haven't got a clue what they're doing. Thanks to our democracy, our immigration laws, the borders and everything, they've just dug themselves a big hole. Which is why I said in my last video, expect to see nationalists, vigilantes rising up because our governments did nothing about the threat. But that's not our call, that's not for Christians to do. We submit humbly with meekness and gentleness and expect the Lord our God to bring vengeance. It belongs to him. It's getting really dark here. It's a rainy day. Muslim Brotherhood. A little backstory, because I believe the Muslim Brotherhood is going to be the vehicle, very similar to the vehicle, that the Antichrist is going to use to form his 10 nation confederation, friends. Remember, this is a very diplomatic, political outfit, the Beast Kingdom. Ten nations, ten rulers are going to come and give their authority to rule with the Antichrist. It's political, friends. It's geopolitical. It's military. Now, the Muslim Brotherhood, their ideology fits. It fits really well. Another one, as you know, has given them a platform in Turkey. He's the next Albana. That's what he thinks he is. Let me read some of this. I'm not going to go into the whole thing. Again, I'm going to make this a short video, but I will leave the links in the description. The Society of the Muslim Brothers, which is a secret society, like you have your Illuminati, your Freemasons, the Shriners. I consider these guys as another society, friends. Dangerous. They're banned in many countries, but they reform and they have different names. Is a transnational Sunni Islamist organization, Sunni, remember the Sunni, the Shia, the Sufi organization founded in Egypt by Islamic scholar and school teacher Hassan al Banna in 1928. It's because they want to reform the caliphate. This is at the heart of it, all friends. This is at the heart of it. Look at the emblem. The group spread to other Muslim countries but has its largest or one of its largest organizations in Egypt despite a succession of government crackdowns so on. The Arab Spring brought it legalization and substantial political power at first but as of 2013 it has suffered severe reversals. Today the primary state backers of the Muslim Brotherhood are Qatar and Turkey. And they're going to use that, friends, to form the Antichrist Beast Kingdom because it has legislation based on the Sharia. Moving on. I might have to turn on a light. It's getting dark. One moment, friends. In fact, before I continue, let me play a clip. I want you to listen, play close attention to what the late Derek Prince, Derek Prince said about the Antichrist spirit. Please listen. It's nine minutes long. I'm not going to play all of it, but I will play from the very beginning. Please listen. All right, now let's look at another main manifestation of the spirit of Antichrist. And this is one it's extremely important for us as Christians to be well informed about at this time. That is Islam, which is the name for the religion of Muhammad. Islam means um, perfection, completeness, fulfillment. And Muhammad arose in the seventh century of this, era, of this era in the Arabian Peninsula, claimed to be a prophet claimed to receive in a cave from an archangel the revelation of the religion which then became Islam. And he claimed that his religion, Islam, was the true fulfillment of the Old and the New Testament. He claimed that the Christians in the Gospels had perverted the real truth, but he, through Islam, was restoring it. That's the basic 
claim of Muhammad. And he first believed that because he rejected idolatry and because he rejected the claims of Christianity, the Jewish people would follow him. But he was disappointed. And when they didn't follow him, he turned against them and became a persecutor of them. Now, let's consider the teachings of Islam. Personally, this is my own opinion. At the m present moment, I think Islam is the most sinister, powerful force opposing the truth of God at work in the world. It's a it's tragedy that so many Christians in the West have totally misunderstood and underestimated Islam. If it once gains power, it will first and foremost suppress the Jews, and second, suppress the Christians. Did you hear that, friends? The late Derek Prince, who I have a lot of respect for, I've read so many of his books, I've listened to his messages, from the very early days when I first gave my life to the Lord Jesus. I can't believe I missed this, what he said about it. I'm going to put the link of this video in the description box. He said it was the most sinister force out there in our world today and how the church, the Christians, have sadly really underestimated it. Let me rewind that little bit there and see what you said there. It once gains power. If it. It will first and foremost suppress the Jews and second suppress the Christians. Now Bible prophecy wasn't his forte, wasn't his thing, Derek Prince. But he had the wisdom to understand, through the word of God, the threat of Islam and what it poses regarding the Antichrist Beast Kingdom. Now, Afghanistan recently had its own atrocities taking place there. Afghan security forces, civilians, face 50% surge in attacks. What's going on? You see what other one's doing? He's causing Islamic... Revival amongst the nations, you guys. That's what's taking place. He's waking them up. There's going to be more trouble. I've been saying this for a long time. Expect the nations to shake. New alliances reforming in order to confront the threat that is coming. The caliphate. Enemy attacks against Afghan security forces and civilians increased by 50% in the third quarter of 2020. Let's move on. In February, the US and the Taliban signed an agreement in Doha, Qatar that called for foreign troops to leave Afghanistan by May 2021 in exchange for guarantees from the Taliban, including that they would not attack US and other coalition troops. Since then, attacks against the US and foreign troops have decreased, but assaults on Afghan military and police have accelerated, including a deadly Taliban offensive against Helmand province's provincial capital earlier this month. The Afghan government held peace talks with Taliban officials beginning on September the 12th in Doha, Qatar. The talks were intended to create a power-sharing agreement for Afghanistan and for permanent ceasefire. But the talks have stored as both sides debate procedural issues. Islam's problem, Islam needs to deal with it and they're going to deal with it, not how we expect them to deal with it. I lost the link. I don't know what happened to that link. This was reported on defenseaviationpost.com. Oh, they, you know, because I had these links open from yesterday. Is it still there, you guys? Terrorist attacks in Europe. How did Pakistan, Turkey help Islamist extremism grow because of their rhetoric? They're not, I told you guys, when Islam, the caliphate forms, they're not going to give an inch away to the West. Not an inch. And we've allowed so many of them in our nations, friends. Now, I'm British. I was born in London. My family are Muslim from Pakistan. I'm British. But so many of the youth in the West in Europe are growing more extreme. Thanks to the internet. 
the internet has its good things and it's got its bad things. As every country in the world is working together to fight the coronavirus pandemic, a similar effort is required to, to eliminate terrorism, which is no less than an epidemic. Because recently, in many countries of the world, there has been at least one terrorist incident. Although the Islamic State has been named before in such attacks, the terrorist attack in France, Afghanistan, twice in a few weeks and then in Vienna, Austria has divided the whole world into two parts. The reactions from some muslim countries after this attack started from france have further increased these attacks after this the jihadi attack has been carried out in many countries in particular turkey and pakistan carried out several verbal attacks that provoked sentiments the question of the reasons behind such incidents of terrorism is arising in people's minds well it's not a surprise to me i don't ask those questions because i see it coming i expect to see this happen friends Many of these people who watch the news, if they're asking such questions, they need to read the word of God and they'll get wisdom. And find out, my goodness, the threat is coming from that region. These guys, these leaders, friends, who we might think are absolute batting mad, are doing what their religious text commands of them. Do you understand? Caliphate, 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 friends. There is no turning back. This is it. There's no turning back from this, friends. It's just going to cause a lot of wars, troubles, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Mozambique has its ISIS problems. Go away. Oh, it's happened again because the links didn't stay there, did they? I want to show you what happened here. Beheadings took place here, friends. Beheadings. At least 20 massacred during Mozambique initiation ceremony. Suspected militants beheaded over a dozen men and teenagers participating in a male initiation ceremony in northern Mozambique, local sources said on Wednesday. In the latest violent incident in the country's insurgency, there's an ISIS insurgency in South Africa, you guys. Iraq. Islamic State resurfaces. There ought to be someone researching, investigating how the heck have they resurfaced. They weren't really, um, they weren't really prevented, they weren't put a stop. Even though Trump said that he defeated the caliphate. No, no. They just go into hiding for a while. <coughs> until they can rearm, regather, strengthen. This is their tactic, it's always been their tactic. Europe is losing patience with Erdogan's Islamist rhetoric and it's going to cause war. History is going to repeat itself, friends. Look at what happened during the Ottoman Empire with um, Europe. <coughs> I'm sorry. Erdogan has close links with terrorist organisations, including ISIS. Swedish Nordic Monitor said, but we know this. I shared a report about that with you a couple of months ago. I shared with you the evidence, the proof that it has links to ISIS and it supported them, friends. Other one is going to use ISIS as another form of a military wing, as does the Muslim Brotherhood and Hamas to further their um, caliphate agenda. Now, Jerusalem Post had something I wanted to talk about, but it touched on a similar theme I already talked about here. I have to reset every page from yesterday, all the tabs that I had opened. <laughs> you don't mind. I have not anyone. The incendiaries. How Pakistan and Turkey fanned the flames of Islamic anger. Is that a surprise? It's not, is it, friends? Is it a surprise? Seriously. If you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you understand that we saw this coming. I spoke specifically of Erdogan and Pakistan's Imran Khan about their speech at the United Nations General Assembly back in 2019. Why was I talking about that? Because I saw these two guys eventually being more vocal and pr promoting this Islamophobia rhetoric. It's 2020 now, it's almost well over a year 
since they had those speeches. And this is exactly what they mean. Friends, do you understand? They have so many people <coughs> who look up to them. <coughs> oh my goodness gracious. These Muslim communities in these nations, they look up to them, friends, and that's the problem. They're, they're looking up to Hitler. I'm sharing you with you this channel. It's called Radical Truth. Radical Truth. Proclaim truth, share the gospel, expose Islam. It's excellent. The content here is so underrated. It's unbelievable. Tony Gwillen. Oh, oh, I probably got his name wrong. His videos are brilliant. I'm on his email list. You must check them out. Please, please check out his channel. <clears throat> he talks about the election right now. The Black Lives Matter and the Islamists. What is Islam? Who is Allah? What is the Christian response? <clears throat> Please check it out. Live during an Islamic takeover. Fabricating Jesus, how the cults distort the gospel of Christ. It's very good. It's very good. Unveiling the facts of Sharia, Islamic law. It's so underrated. I don't know what this guy is doing with his YouTube channel, but he's not promoting it at all. So much amazing content here is going unnoticed. And if I can, I'm going to try to link his video, his channel, under my description in every video that I make. Because I really think what he has to say is valuable, friends. Word of God, let's go. <clears throat> now, Revelation chapter 13. I've gone over several times. I've gone over it in detail, in a lot of detail in my past videos. I'm going to go over it again. I'm not going to go into that amount of detail this time because many of us have heard it, me repeat it several times, but I want to go over it again. Revelation 13 is telling us where this beast is going to arise from. It's coming from the Mediterranean region, the sea, the people is the Gentile nations, <clears throat> and it's going to be a culmination of past seven kingdoms, seven heads revived, but it will have ten rulers. And those ten rulers are the ten nation leader confederation that are going to give the authority to this one guy that heads the Islamic beast kingdom. Remember, the beast is a person and he has a kingdom. It's a political movement, you guys. It's not. There's no mystery. It's not complicated. It's very straightforward. Let's read verse one, chapter thirteen. <clears throat> Then I stood in the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and on his horns ten crowns, and on his heads a blasphemous name. Do you remember? I just showed it to you. The seven heads. So when this beast kingdom arises, it's going to have nations that cover the, this whole entire region. Now, when it comes to Rome, remember Rome was split, it was divided east and west. It grew greater in the Byzantine east. Then came the Ottomans, the Islamic Empire. And after that, <clears throat> it's still been in control. Take a look at Jerusalem, the Temple Mount. Who's in control of the Temple Mount, you guys? Italy, Rome, or Islam? You can probably hear the rain and stuff. It's raining here. <laughs> We've been waiting for rain for a long time in California. Praise God for the rain. <clears throat> but when this kingdom forms, it's specifically, specifically blasphemous. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard, the Grecian leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear, the Medo-Persian silver bear. <clears throat> and his mouth like the mouth of a golden Babylonian lion. I'm going to go back to that image again. One moment, one moment. I need to close that door because I know you can hear that tapping. I should have closed it. So what did I say about the silver, the gold... The bronze. I'm talking about this image here. It's so consistent, the Word of God is telling us in the themes, consistency, 
repetitively that it's the Babylonian, the Medo-Persian, the Grecian empires that are going to reform together and form this caliphate. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, friends. <clears throat> it comes and goes, my cough. Make no mistake about this beast. It's because the dragon gives him his power, his authority, his throne. And I saw one of his heads, as if it had been mortally wounded, the Turkish Ottoman head, one of the mountains, one of the kingdoms, the sick man of Europe was wounded. And his deadly wound was healed, friends. We're going to see the reviving of the Ottoman Empire. <clears throat> but it's going to be different. Does that make sense? And all the world marveled and followed the beast. So they worshipped the dragon who gave authority to the beast and they worshipped the beast saying, Who is like the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Let me explain something to you that might <clears throat> help. When we talk about Islam, they worship Allah, but they also worship Muhammad. Make no mistake about that, friends. They worship him. Just like it says here, so they worshipped the dragon, Allah, Baal, who gives authority to the beast, Muhammad, and they worshipped the beast, Muhammad, saying, who is like Muhammad, who is able to make war with him? Does that make sense? I was using that as an analogy to help you understand, <clears throat> look at it, consider it in that perspective, because it makes sense. Now, remember, the false prophet is also going to arise. So there's going to be two leaders. You've got the spiritual leader and you've got the political military leader, friends. Look at Iran today. Iran has two leaders. You've got a political ruler and you've got the supreme ru spiritual ruler. Just like the Antichrist and the false prophet. It's not hard to imagine. It's The word of God is trying to give us a lot of detail so we'll understand it. We won't miss the boat. We won't look in the other direction, be deceived into looking at somebody who's not even anywhere close to being the Antichrist. The word of God is very accurate. Always stick with the Bible, friends. And he was given a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies and he was given authority. Who's giving him this stuff? Who's in control? Who's in absolute control? The Lord our God. Everything will come to pass according to the word of God's prophecies. It will come to pass, friends. He was given authority to continue for 42 months. That's it. That's the window in which he will have this authority. Three and a half years of absolute tribulation on earth because he goes after the Christians and the Jews, just like Derek Prince had already warned about. And he wasn't even talking about Revelation 13. He said if Islam was to rise and come to power, it would go after the Jews and the Christians. And Israel, the land of Israel. Then he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name, his tabernacle, specifically the God of the Bible. Do you understand, friends? Specifically the God of the Bible. He doesn't come pretending he's a Jewish Messiah, pretending to be Yahweh. He's, a po he's an oppo opponent of the God of the Bible. <clears throat> Where did the people get this stuff? People that are teaching this part of the Bible, where are they getting it from? And those who dwell in heaven. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. His authority was given him over every tribe, tongue and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him. Whose names have not been written in the book of life and of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If anyone <clears throat> has an ear to hear, let him hear. He who leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He who kills with the sword must be cured with the sword. Here is the patience. This is what we need. And faith of the saints. In the midst of the captivity that the church is going to go through, in the midst of the killing by the sword that we're going to experience, we must have patience and we must have faith. That's the word of God. 
and again I said I'm going to do a Bible study on this whole thing again because it's important I'm not going to go into Saudi Arabia situation right now I found something and I'm going to talk about that another time <clears throat> so again we see this guy rising <clears throat> and um, we're living in incredible times friends Europe is having to respond to the threat they've got no choice and you can see the division it's causing already Erdogan is really meddling and he's causing a lot of problems with the leaders what are they going to do? please share this video please like subscribe if you haven't help me get my messages out especially within the Christian circles friends Bible prophecy circles and let them at least consider this perspective friends please time is of the essence I will continue to make more messages I pray this was helpful I pray that you found this valuable friends I'll be back again soon and I'm going to talk a lot more about the prophetic biblical scriptures I love doing that that's my favorite thing to do my most favorite thing to do is the word of God and sharing it with you and I want to make sure I do that again one more time okay friends so much more to talk about of course as usual there's things I wanted to talk about regarding the Shriners the mystical side of Islam I want to go into all of that friends there's so much there's still part three I've done two parts I haven't even done part three regarding Jacob's trouble regarding the tribulation and the rapture Please check those two videos out that I did, part one and part two, regarding the tribulation and the rapture. And the third part that I haven't yet done, because the Lord is still showing me things about it, is about Jacob's trouble. And that's coming up soon as well. Okay, so I'm going to go have a wonderful weekend. The Lord be with you. Stay close to the Lord Jesus. And remember, friend, by patience and by faith, we remain faithful to the Lord. Love you. Bye-bye.